Okay, so let's have a look at Egyptian, Egyptian, ancient Egyptian alchemy, as in alchemy or chemistry, essentially. Now, this alchemy has been, I would say, perverted, but that's a separate topic. And so, what we have is, how did they make this gold? How did it, when you get gold out of the ground, it doesn't come out in a, you know, even when you get these pure gold nuggets, they're actually not pure. But what you find is these, uh, well, ancient, across the ancient world, but Egyptian artifacts, how did they create this gold? They had to purify it. They had to make it. They had to work the gold. They had to under, they had to process it. Very important theme. Now, it's often just said, oh, well, it's mystery. Well, it's actually quite a bit of, uh, the legacy of this knowledge carried through to later alchemical traditions. So when they speak of alchemy, it's usually 15th, 16th, 17th century. The records actually go quite back, back through to, uh, the Arabians, back through, well, back Mesopotamians, back to, uh, such as Cleopatra of Egypt, uh, sorry, Cleopatra. Pardon me, the alchemist, not to be confused with Cleopatra, as in Anthony and Cleopatra, but, so how did they create this gold? Well, they had metallurgy, essentially, they had chemistry, what we would, uh, alchemy, the sources. Now, another key theme, so alchemy is not just about metallurgy, it's not just about medicine, it also has a lot to do with colours, and so where you see these cave, pa uh, cave paintings, sorry, tomb paintings, other paintings, the colour palette that they had, and colour has been a very important theme, so uh, royal purple, for instance, uh, the Phoenicians basically got rich because they had almost a monopoly on purple. Sacra bleu, sacred blue. So even uh, in the um, uh, early, uh, not early, Christian artists, the, the connection between Mary and blue, because blue was very expensive. Now, it's very hard. Uh, you can make blue, you can make even purples, but they're not, they don't last. They're not strong colours and they don't last over time. So to make a good quality dye or a pigment, very important. Uh, you don't want it to fade away very quickly and you want it to to have an intense colour. So this has been, uh, dyes and colours has actually been a big part of, the tra of international trade going back to ancient times. And so how did the Egyptians do this? Well, the Egyptians, their knowledge was passed on to other civilizations, uh, And we have great Greek and Roman records and the Greeks openly discuss about the fact that they learnt from previous civilizations. So, uh, the Egyptian colour palette, the, the history of colour and dyes picked is very interesting because it has, applies to glass making and to all sorts of themes. Now, so how did they get these colours? Well, once more we can look back to the sources and so uh, Book 7, Chapter 7, Vitruvius, and natural colours, and so he talks, uh, as for colours, some are natural products found in fixed places and dug up there, while others are artificial compounds of different substances treated and mixed in proper proportions so as to be equally serviceable. They're making colour. This is chemistry. This is, you know, industrial chemists are still working on colour. They're still inventing new colours all the time and how to create these pigments. Very important theme. So, uh, red earth, now, what I want to get to is, okay, so let's look, uh, this is a typical alchemical chart uh, where we have Venus, Aphrodite, Mars, Aries, Sun, Apollo, Mercury, Hermes, Moon, Luna, Jupiter, Zeus, Saturn, Kronos, which are connected to these very important elements. So the seven visible planets, these important gods, and also to the elements being used and accessible back at the time. So even before the Iron Age, strictly speaking, well, they were able to obtain bog iron and meteor meteoric iron for, from meteors. So but before the, the Iron Age, they were working with iron and it, they did have access to it. They just didn't have access to it on an industrial scale. But most of these metals, silver, gold, tin, silver, lead, copper, well, how did they extract these things? So, well, let's begin with Mercury or Hermes or or Foth, the god of knowledge, now uh, weights and measures, um, but especially the element Mercury, and how it connects especially to things such as gold and silver, the importance of this element. Now it comes from the ore cinnabar, which is uh, red, vermilion, but it's also so in China, other ancient cultures, they were working with cinnabar, lead, uh, sorry, mercury, quicksilver. And so, for instance, vermilion ink was reserved only for the emperor. This was a very, just like jade, uh, emperor was reserved for, you know, uh, the ancient Chinese tombs have been found where they found smashed jade 
priceless jade all over it because the the the, uh, the tomb robbers didn't take the jade because they were unable to sell it. So there are these connect now mercury. We extract it from cinnabar. Mercury, we find uh, mercury pools in pyramids in South America and in, in Egypt. And why is mercury so important? Especially liquid mercury. I won't go into that because, again, it's... Uh, yeah, anyway, well, it has very practical purpose in the production of silver and gold especially. And to create good quality gold and silver. What, what were the Chinese? What were the ancient Mesoamericans? Gold and silver, amongst other elements. So, why is mercury so important? Now, I'll show you a clip here. Amalgam, so okay, why would we leave that now? Uh, mercury amalgam is used in two fillings, but uh, for instance, when miners uh, to get the gold dust out of the um, out of the pan, you can pour mercury in there, and the mercury will attach uh, the gold and silver will attach to the mercury, and then you can just boil off the mercury left with pure gold. Now, mercury, as an example of an amalgam, let's look at this gold amalgam. Okay, so I'll just skip a little bit forward. Look, he just drops some liquid mercury on there. And what happens is that the gold essentially dissolves and, and becomes part of a mercury amalgam. Now, this works for silver and others. And you just... Well, this is how, how... Now, how do we know that they work like this in the ancient time? Well, because the ancients left us very nice descriptions of it. And this also connects to colours as well. So... Uh, Vitruvius, you can read up on these colour systems, how they were... Um, now, cinnabar, which is mercury... The raw ore of mercury is cinnabar. Or vermilion. Now, cinnabar and, or, and quicksilver. And he discusses how it's used and how to extract it from there. Uh, the, the unique qualities of it and also how well weights and measures uh, poured it but if quicksilver is poured into a vessel uh, you can like the ability how things float on mercury now okay for instance uh, if the quicksilver is poured into a vessel and the stone weight 100 pounds is laid upon it the stone swims on the surface and cannot depress the liquid nor break through nor separate it if we remove a 100 pound weight and put on a scruple of gold it will not swim but will sink to the bottom of its own accord. Hence, it is undeniable that the gravity of a substance depends on the amount of its weight, not on its nature. Now, further you go in down in Vitruvius, you can find him talking about water displacement and the eureka moment of... Oh, God, now my name slipped his tongue. Archimedes, eureka, and how this connects. So, when you actually read these older documents, they were quite advanced, very, very, very advanced, uh, not in just working and cutting stone and lifting stone as well, they described it in, in, in great detail, in great detail, and, uh, but also, so, colours, so, now, for instance, when gold, for instance, in Egypt, they did it as well, but the rich Romans would weave gold into their garments, when the gold has been woven into a garment and the garment becomes warm, worn out with age so it is no longer respectable to use, the pieces of cloth are put into earthen pots and burned up in the fire. That burns away the, the cotton or, or the hemp, depending on what thread they were using. The ashes are then thrown into water and quicksilver added there too. This attracts all the bits of gold and makes them combine with itself. The water is then poured off and the rest is emptied into a cloth and squeezed into the hands, whereupon the quicksilver, being a liquid, escapes back through the loose texture of a cloth, but the gold, which has been brought together by the squeezing, is found in a pure state. So to recycle the gold, this is now is the same thing with the gold um, in on uh, electronics. This is how one way, it's poisonous, mind you, you have to be done very carefully, but the, the gold and silver and, and these other rare elements will attach to it. And then there are, again, other descriptions of how to separate these uh, elements. So you might get, gold and silver it joins to the mercury you boil off the mercury then you're left with electrum uh, alloy of gold and silver and then there are other ways of separating it from here as well but cinnabar continued i will now return to the preparation of vermilion using cinnabar the ore of mercury to create vermilion red ink as in the red ink which was exclusive to the chinese emperors uh, hence it keeps its color perfectly when applied to the polished stucco finished of closed apartments, yet in open apartments such as veristyles and and again just the use of now that it goes back to the tomb of the Red Queen at Palenque and the use of this red ore. This keeps you know that you can make red 
for instance, um, another, but it doesn't keep its color. It's a, this, this brilliant long lasting color, reds, blues. This, uh, now, furthermore, so now of the essential elements, such as copper, So artificial colours that get now uh, prison tattoos. One of the ways they do it, they get a, a candle and they will burn uh, and then hold up the flame underneath uh, some sort of flat surface. It will collect the soot and then you can make a, a tattoo ink. That's a pr like a, not the best way to do it, but that's one of the ways that it's done in prison. But uh, I've never been in prison, mind you. I just recently saw that on a show about tattoo artists. But uh, the official colours black, so there are different. You can also get from compounds. There are different ways of getting it. But burnt blue, burnt ochre. Now methods of making blue were discovered in Alexandria, and afterwards, Pistorius set up the making of it in um, at Paluz Pazuloli. Sorry, the method of obtaining it from the substances of which it has been found to consist is strange enough. Sand and the flowers of matron are braided, braided together so finely that the product is like meal. Copper. Copper sulfate. It's probably, if you've done the chemistry class in high school, copper sulfate, that blue powder, which you might, you know, use in gardens as well. That's copper sulf, copper salt. And um, that's blue. Well, that's, you know, you can, so as it describes here, you can uh, make blue from copper as well. Now, you wouldn't think copper is, is blue because it's that sort of... Um, not quite goldy, what would you call that? Well, the, the coppery, brass, bronzish colour. But you can make alchemy, chemistry. Uh, now, white lead. And so, again, lead, uh, like in the, when the dandies, like the French royals, for instance, and around that, uh, you know, around Louis, and, you know, they have, you see, them with that very white face and the big puffy wig. Well, that was lead that they were using to make, so you're going to make lead with, uh, from white, Brings is a good way of making white from lead. Uh, now, now for instance, galena uh, in places such as South America and elsewhere, you find the minerals and it's copper, bismuth, zinc, gold and silver, but lead as well. And then you have to separate the elements out. So whether it was Mesoamericans, ancient Chinese, ancient Indians, uh, Archaim up in uh, Russia, ancient Egyptians, they did not you couldn't go to a store and just buy buy pure elements. You had to find the ore and then separate the ore. Alchemy, chemistry, uh, you know, trade secrets, and uh, bronze copper alloy. Now, again, so Vitruvius link will be in a description. But how did they make purple marine shellfish? So for instance, the shell, they would use a, a shell. The Phoenicians were especially, especially big uh, royal purple. Still now, the kings and queens have purple as a, a ceremonial color again back in or well, going back in time so how did they make these colors well Vitruvius is an excellent source for this uh, Herodotus Strabo these other ancient writers who actually traveled to uh, Egypt Mesopotamia and other and spoke with the people and the the right the, the writings are extant they're not uh, and it's well it's it's just interesting that certain high profile uh, alternative history uh, high priests I've got to have to call it seem to go out of their way to to not include this information while at the same time accusing others of suppressing information and blah 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 uh you gotta break the you gotta break the um take the red pill from those <laughs> because there's gatekeepers go both ways and i'm uh not in the least defending the, the gatekeepers in the establishment but there are gatekeepers in the in the alternative and and well, like you know, it's hard to find really a kind word for them because the more you look and the more of, I broke away and stopped just accepting what they say is gospel, and then you realise, well, these people have been at it for decades. Why do they not? Uh, why did not discuss these things? Well, because it's a problem. It's not profitable for them. There is an industry uh, in going into this, and links in the description: Herodotus, Strabo, Vitruvius, Pliny. Other writers who we can translate and understand in our modern sense, uh, unlike hieroglyphs and other forms of writing where it's a bit more colourful and the phraseology is different. Uh, Latin, Greek is the root of English, and so we can understand these things much more clearly. And there is just a huge amount of information on the ancient past 
technologies that is available. Have a good one.